let's restart the class. So, uh, just I put up here some example of an exchange traded fund. ETF is exchange traded fund following the exchanges. Okay. So we have Codex and Tiger, our two companies doing that in Korea, right? So we have Korean index, COSDAQ, 150. How many companies do you think are included in this list? It's called the COSDAQ 150. How many countries do you think are included? S&P 500 has 500 companies. Cosdec 150. How many companies do you think it has? 150. Very good. Okay, so they they are going to be Korean companies, right? We can go here to Giok Jongbu. We can see kind of what kind of companies are included here. Okay. So here we can see some different companies. So. We have, similarly, we have this fund, which is for uh, China, A300. How many companies are included here? 300, right? Across China. So large Chinese companies, right? Here. Bank of Commerce in China. Okay. We have... Ilbon, Nikkei, 225. How many companies? Very good. Okay. Do you know Japanese companies? Honda, do you know Honda? It's included here, right? Do you know this country? Yes. Germany, right? What companies are from Germany? Do you know any famous German companies? Siemens, right here is the S&P 500. This is leveraged, so it's more risky. Right? So you can choose. You can go on here, and you can make an account with your bank or some stock trader, and you can buy the ETF for very cheap. I don't say that you should ask your parents to spend all their money and buy the S&P 500 ETF when you go home. Tell your Parents, sell the house. I learned about the uh, index fund today. Sell the house and invest everything in the S&P 500, right? But maybe you could invest on Shipman One or Shipman One, right? Just out of interest. Maybe in five years it could be worth double the money, or maybe you could lose. You lose Man One, right? Or you make profits. You get Ocean One. All right, by next year. Just to, to learn about, right? Could do that, just a small thing, rather than putting your money in the bank. You can also look for this fund. You can see here one of the problems in Korea, financial market is not as developed as the London or the US. So if I want to invest money in this fund, very widely traded and easy to invest money in London or the US. But in Korea, not many people trade this kind of fund, okay? So there's an opportunity. Maybe some of these companies like Tiger and Codex, they only started four or five years ago, offering these kind of funds to Korean investors. Okay? So there's an opportunity there. After you finish the university, you can start your own fund company. Buy the stocks in the other countries and offer the funds to Korean investors. Okay? But maybe not a good idea to do immediately. Usually when you start your own business, it's a good idea to work for a few years in the fund company, learn about the business very well, learn how to buy the stocks in the other country, and then you can start your own company after a few years, okay? Offering this kind of fund to the Korean investors. So let's continue with the class then. We are going to talk about the new topic, behavior and finance. A little bit like psychology. Do you like psychology? So this is the last part of the basics of finance. This is things we should understand before we get into the main part of the course, right? Things like diversification and financial statements and time value of money. 
and also psychology in finance, or behavior affects things in finance. So, uh, sorry, can you close the door at the back of the class? Students sitting at the back of the class, hello? Can you close the door? So, uh, financial markets do not always perform according to our theory or our equation or what we expect. Human behavior has been shown to be an important factor in financial markets. So, this part, if you want to follow in the book, is on page, it's just one page, right? Page 21, 22. So, Robert Schiller is a famous uh, professor from Yale University. He did a lot of research in this area. So, he wrote a book called Irrational Exuberance. How do you say rational in Korean? How do you say rational in Korean? No? Are you a rational person? He's not joking. You don't look very sure. What's un irrational? Be some joking. Are you be some joking? Hmm? No. Would you make a deal? I give you man one. You give me e man one. Is that be some joking? Hmm? Is that irrational? Are human beings always rational or sometimes irrational? Okay, so that's what he says. Irrational exuberance means overconfident. They're irrational and they're overconfident. Exuberant means too confident. So human behavior, such as herding, overconfidence, and relying too much on easily available data, can lead to irrational prices of assets. So according to the efficient market theory, in any liquid market, a liquid market means we have many buyers and sellers. So the stock market is an example of a liquid market, or the currency market, right? Buying dollars, selling one, that's a liquid market. We can easily buy and sell, the price is changing all the time. A non-liquid market would be, let's say, the real estate market in Gangwon-do, okay? Some small area of Gangwon-do. So there's not many buyers and sellers. Maybe you're the only person interested in buying that apartment in the countryside, okay? That's not a liquid market. So we're talking about liquid markets where there's many buyers and sellers, okay? In that case, the current price in the market is the correct price. Why? All information is available to all investors, okay? So all investors, all the buyers and sellers can see the information. So let's say we're trading currencies. We have the US dollar and the Korean won. Okay? So we can see all the information about the US economy and about the Korean economy. If there's a crisis in the Korean economy, maybe people will start to sell the Korean won. Okay? The Korean won will get weaker. Okay? If the US government is going to increase the interest rate, maybe they're going to buy the dollar. The dollar is going to get stronger. They get more interest payment. So, they have that information. Everybody can see on the news the US government is going to raise the interest rate. Okay? So then the price should be the correct price. The investors use this information to arrive at a decision about an investment in a rational and intelligent manner. So I see US government raising the interest rate. I think, oh, that means the US dollar will get stronger. So I'm intelligent and rational. I buy the US dollar and sell the Korean won. Okay? So the news comes out. The information is available to everybody. People react to the news in an intelligent and rational manner. So it means that it's very hard to beat the market according to the efficient markets. Because the efficient market says the current price is the correct price. Let's do an example for a company. Okay? Facebook has all the information about their business. Okay? Their plan for the future. It's all available to the public. It's a public company. So I can see all this information about Facebook. So I decide, buy the stock or sell the stock? Buy the stock or sell the stock? Okay, we have a lot of intelligent people around the world deciding, buy the stock or sell the stock? So the stock should be more or less correct, the price. So I shouldn't be able to say, no, I'm smarter than all those people. I know that 
Facebook stock is going to go up. Because anyway, information is available to everybody. I don't have any special information about Facebook that tells me Facebook is going to go up. I have the same information as everybody else. Okay, am I the only intelligent person in the world? No, right? There are a lot of intelligent people, probably more intelligent than me, right? Or us. And they are using this information to make a decision. So according to this one, I can't make much profit by trading the stock. Just the new news comes out and the price changes. New news comes out and the price changes. But right now, I don't know better than anybody else. And everybody is rational and the information is used well. So this is a theory. Okay? There are many intelligent people in the world, therefore the price of something is too low or too high. What's going to happen? The price is too low of Facebook. All the other intelligent people are going to say, oh, that price is very low. That's good value. And they're going to buy the stock. And then the price is going to go up. Okay? If the price of Facebook is too high, they'll sell the stock and the price will go down. And eventually, the price will find the correct level. Okay? So, the US stock market is a very liquid market. So we could say that the stock prices are correct. And it should only change when we have new information. Okay? So then the question for you is, why do you think the US stock market looks like this? If that's the case, right? This is called a bubble, bubble, bubble. Okay? This was a bubble. Uh, here we have the IT crash, everybody investing in stocks, right, with IT companies. Somebody has a computer in their basement, they start up their own IT company with the name .com. So you say, oh, I'm investing in their company. But they're just a person in the basement with their computer, right? So everybody is investing in here. We make a bubble. And then the prices go down a lot. And then back up again a lot. And then back down again a lot. And then recently, if you invested in the S&P 500 here, in 2009, you would have made triple your money up to here. Now, today, okay? So why, given that we have this theory, that the pro everybody has the information, everybody is intelligent, so the price should be the correct price, there wasn't this much change in the economic information, right, or those things. So why do you think the market changed so much? Discuss with your partner. Why doesn't the market look like this? The small changes. Why? Right? Why do we have such big changes in the stock markets? Discuss with your partner. Why do you think? Another more recent time one. This is China. China last year, April 2015. Right? April. Stock market goes from 3,000 to 5,000 and back down again to 3,000 over the period of two months. The economic data for China didn't change that much in this three month period. Why did the stock market go up to 5,000 and come back down again to 3,000 in China? last year, in the summertime, right? Up, down, April, June, July, September, right? Massive increase and massive, so massive bubble and massive crash. So why do those things happen? Why do you think? So where is the attendance list? What do you think? Why last year in China, 
did the price go? In April, the price was 3,500, right? Price went up to over 5,000 by July, and by October, it's back down to 3,000. There wasn't that much change in the world economy or economic information for China in that time. So why did the stock market change like, the prices change like that? What do you think? Uh, because of liquid market. It's a liquid market. Everybody is buying and selling the stocks. Mm -hmm. But in a liquid market, the people should, everybody can buy and sell. Right? A lot of people are buying and selling, so we shouldn't have that much price abnormality. So liquid market is not the reason. Can you think of another reason? Why did everybody buying stock and then suddenly selling stock? What about expectation and reality? Like, if China government something like undo the regulation, lots of people are going to be impacted about mm. uh, improvement of China. Yeah. But at the some time later, they just based on reality. It wasn't that successful. So, so the government changed the regulation, but they didn't change the regulation that much. They tweaked the regulation, but the stock. The stock market went from 3,500 to 5,000 and back down again, right? If we change some regulation, it might change the stock market a little bit, right? But not that much. Any other reason? No, nobody has any explanation for why this happened in China last year. A lot of people lost their money. No? Any ideas? Hmm? What's the topic of this class? No, this this one, this PPT. Yeah. So does anybody does that give anybody a hint? Hmm? Yes. Following other people. Yes. Okay. Following the other people. So everybody's buying stock here. What's happening? Price is going up. So am I making an intelligent decision based on all of the information available? Or am I just following other people here? Right? Just you tell me. Oh, I made 20% on my stocks last month. Right? Do I go out and check all the information and think to myself, is it an intelligent decision to invest in these stocks or not? Check the price and the profit and long-term plan of the company? Or do I just say, what? You made 20%? I'm buying stocks! Yes. Which do I do? Hmm? Right, so that's the problem, right? People can't just follow blindly to other people. That's one problem. And then what happens here? Stock price starts going down. What happens? People start doing what? Selling, panicking, right? Selling the stock. So we end up back where we started. So over the long term, we should see the trend, right? It's going up. But we can see often the bubbles and crashes in the stock market. The same for the US. The long term trend is here. S&P 500 going up, right? But this is Warren Buffet's point. He doesn't want his wife to sell her stocks when it's here and here. Okay? Because this, that's how you're going to lose money. If you bought the S&P 500 in 1988, it would have been, you know, or let's say 1992, you would have been 500. So you invested $500 in 1990, you would have $2,000 now. Okay? But in the meantime, you might have got some stress. Okay, so it's a little, if we invest over the long term, it's safer, we can learn that. Because we can learn that in the short term, human behavior can affect the market. Okay, so we can't ignore human behavior. Human behavior can affect the market. <coughs> Do you know that Indians in America, they used to use this idea to hunt the buffalo. Herding, it's called herding. The animals move together, they all follow each other in a herd. So they would push them to the cliff, and then all the buffalo would follow the other buffalo to jump off the cliff, and then the Indians would collect all the meat and have a big party at the end, right? So this guy was just following this guy. But he should have been thinking for himself instead of just following the other buffalo, right? He should have stopped and said, why is that Indian guy waving his clothes? Something is a little bit suspicious here. 
I don't think I'm going to follow over the cliff. I think I'll go somewhere else, right? But he didn't say that. He just said, oh, I'm going to follow him. Okay? So, hurting is the lack of individual decision making or thoughtfulness, causing people to think and act in the same way as the majority of those around them. Sometimes, humans can sometimes follow each other blindly, like a herd of animals that follow each other to jump over a cliff. Okay? So, we're going to look at the example of Ireland. An independent report into the real estate bubble and crash in Ireland in the 2000s. They said herding was the main problem of real estate trouble. Do you understand real estate? So the Irish government hired some guy from Iceland to come over, or Finland, do an investigation. Tell us, what was the cause of the real estate bubble in Ireland, right? This is the real estate bubble. The prices went up here to 300 on the index and back down to 150. So the house price went up from 100 to 300. So people were very happy their house price went up 300%. They were all going to the house party and boasting to each other. Oh, my house went up $20,000 last year, last month. And then, oh, my job as a teacher, it's just a hobby. I make all my money from house, houses and real estate investments, right? I don't make, oh, that's just small money. I make big money, right? Here. And then, all the house price went down they lost the 50%. The house price went down a lot, 50%, right? Then they never talk about house price at the party anymore. Never want to talk about houses anymore, okay? So, <clears throat> the problem for this is hurting. Everybody was going to the party and telling each other, oh, I've got a house. What, you don't have any house? You're a loser. I just made 100,000 pounds last year, loser. Get your life together, right? Do you understand? Then you go home, Mommy, I want to buy a house, give me money. Please, please give me money to buy a house. Then she gives you money to buy a house. Then you buy a house, and then the price keeps going up and everybody's buying a house, right? But did you think, stop and think, is it a good idea to buy a house? No, you didn't, right? Then suddenly, the house price goes down, and Nothing you can do, okay? So actually, in Ireland there was 300,000 empty properties and in the country there's only 1.8 million houses. So about uh, one-sixth, one over six of all the houses in Ireland were empty. Ireland is a really big country, okay? So the information was quite clear. The house price shouldn't be that expensive in such a big country with so many empty properties. So if people just stopped and made their own intelligent decision based on the information, then they wouldn't have bought the houses, okay? But they didn't stop and make their own decision based on the information, okay? So it's also for you in your future, if you're making some investment, okay? You have to look, analyze all of the information instead of just buying because the price is going up, okay? Because if you buy here because the price is going up, then next minute you're here. Okay, you lost a lot of money. So, another problem with investments is overconfidence. So people tend to have too much confidence in their ability to make smart decisions. Okay, I think I'm really smart, right? I know about stocks and houses, right? So, just, I'm smart, I'm like a genius. So when I invest my money, I'm going to make a profit. I can't make a mistake. Okay, do you understand some people think like that? Naturally, so people think their own decision is a good decision. Why? Because they made the decision and they're, they're great. Okay? So overconfidence is another problem in financial markets. And an, another problem is availability. People rely on information that is easily available. So, for example, it's easy for me to see about the company's profits last year. So just I see the profit and I think, okay, invest in this company. But it's not easy for me to find out the information about the long-term strategy of the company, right? So I don't find out the information about the long-term strategy. And I just invest in the company because it made good profits last year, okay? So I made a mistake. I just used the easy information, right? I was a little bit lazy. Do you understand lazy? 
and I just used the information which was easy to get and based my decision on that information rather than finding the hard information to get to and thinking properly. So because these are the three main psychological issues why we end up with bubbles and crashes, right? So Rob Schiller went around here in the US and he asked traders, why are you selling? Why are you selling your stock? And they answered him, everybody is selling. That was the answer, right? They didn't have a proper reason. Just everybody else is selling, we're selling. Now, so then let's discuss the questions. What does the efficient market theory say and what is hurting? So we can see those questions in our book on the question page. So you can look at page 20 and 21, 21 to help you answer the question. And the question is on page 26. To the first question. So, uh, Trey G. Sup, what's the answer to the first question? Can you take down your hand and speak clearly? Can you take down your hand and speak more loudly, please? Yes. Why? There's two reasons why. What are the two reasons why the price should be the correct price? Yeah. But there's two reasons. Can anybody tell me the two reasons? He says, efficient market says that the price is the correct price when we have a lot of buyers and sellers. What are the reasons? Two reasons. 
Everybody has the same information. Yes, yes. and? People are intelligent and rational, right? What's the problem with this theory? Are people intelligent and rational? Hmm? No, they're not always as intelligent and rational, okay? So then, uh, the next question. Uh, Trey G. Su. Where is Trey G. Su? What is hurting? So people don't make individual decisions. What do they do instead? Hmm? If you're not making your decision yourself, what are you doing? How are you making your decision? In the herd of animals, how do they make the decision? How did this buffalo make his decision to run over the cliff? Hmm? Did he make that decision himself? He followed the other person, okay? So do you have any question about human behavior and finance? No, so just we can note here especially that the short term stock price, short term stock price may not be the correct price, okay? This might not be the correct price. This not, might not be the correct price. The correct price might be here, okay? But it could be undervalued because people panicked too much and sold all their stocks, or it could be overvalued because people were following each other or hurting, okay? So, although we are going to use stock price as a kind of a measure, we just need to understand that, you know, looking at the stock price over the longer term, is going to give us a better idea than just looking at the stock price at any moment in time. Okay. So then let's look at the next part, the objective in financial management. So we're going into the main part of the course. We finished the looking at the basics of finance, which are things we should understand, right? So. What is an objective? An objective is a specific result that we want to achieve within a time frame and with the resources. Okay? So something we want, a goal, like a goal, something we want to achieve or do within a certain time using resources like money, time and people. Okay? So the objective for a financial manager, if you're a financial manager in the company, is to maximize, we saw this word before, maximize, Okay, maximize means make the best or make the highest. The value of the business. Okay, when we're talking about that more specifically, financial managers should focus on maximizing the stock price, okay, while also considering the rights of stakeholders when making decisions. So a stakeholder is anybody who is involved with the company or has an interest in the company. For example, the workers the customers, the suppliers, the government, NGOs, they are all stakeholder. So don't be confused between stockholder and stakeholder. Stockholder owns a part of the company, owner of the company, okay? Shareholder is the same, owning the company. Stakeholder, anybody who is interested in the company, okay? So employees, uh, customers, Stockholders are stakeholders, too. Bondholders are stakeholders, okay? Banks, governments, all stakeholders. So we should focus on maximizing the stock price while considering the rights and considering all our stakeholders when making decisions. So when we talk about value, what are we talking about? We, assets, we're talking about assets, okay? We have assets, currently, Assets in place, right? Existing assets we have today, our investments, our factories, our buildings. We have growth assets, okay? Future investments. We want these to increase their value, be more valuable, worth more money, okay? 
On the other hand, we want our equity also to get higher. Okay? Equity is the market value. So stockholders pay more for the stock, we have a higher value of equity. If our assets are worth more, then people may want to pay more money for our company. Okay? This one may also increase. So we want to increase the value of our company. So why do we use stock price? Okay? Stock price is easy to see and constantly updated. So it's easy to measure stock price. Stock price is changing every minute. People are buying and selling stock. Okay? Profits are updated once every quarter. So the company only calculates their profits every three months, every quarter. But we can see the stock price changing very often. Okay? If investors are rational, then stock prices show the results of decisions immediately. So we make a decision about the company, like we're going to buy another company. For example, do you understand acquisition? Acquisition, we buy a small company, okay? So if we make an acquisition, then was that a good decision or a bad decision? We can find out in the stock market. Our stock price goes up, good decision. Our stock price goes down, bad decision. Okay? Did investors think our decision was a good one or a bad one? Okay? Many investors think in the long term. So stock prices should show the long term effects of decisions made by the firm. So we make a decision for the acquisition, buy another company. That's a long term decision, over five years, over ten years. Okay? Investors are thinking about that. If we just look at our profit this quarter, that's not long term, that's short term. We made this much profit now. Okay? Maybe because we made the acquisition, we lost money. Because we had to spend money to hire more people or we had to try to fix the companies together. So we lost a lot of money this year. Okay? So in the short term, our profits are down. Okay? So if we look at profits, it's more short term. Okay? And not as often changing. But stock price may be better to use than profits. It's more long term and easier to see. We could also use market share as an objective for the manager. Do you understand market share? Market share is the percent of a market controlled by a particular firm. So if we think about cola, Coca-Cola is going to have a large market share, right? Pepsi will have another market share. So we could make our objective, let's make our market share bigger. Okay, we could use market share as an objective instead of stock price. But higher market share does not mean higher prices. In fact, to get more higher market share, we might make lower prices. If we make lower prices, we sell more, make more market share. Okay, so the increase in market share by, might be accompanied by lower profits or even losses. Sometimes companies make a loss to get a bigger market share. They lose money. So, if we just concentrate on increasing the company's market share, we could fail, we could go bankrupt. Okay? So market share shouldn't really be the objective for financial managers. Okay? Profits. If we focus just on short-term profits, we might make poor decisions, which means we make a big profit this year, but low profits later. This was a problem in the financial crash. Okay? The banks, the managers, financial managers in the bank was getting their bonus based on return on equity this year. Right? So they wanted to make more debt so that they get a higher return on equity. Okay? And they want to take high risk project so they get big bonus this year. They weren't thinking in the long term because the bonus system was set up wrong. Do you understand bonus? How do you say bonus in Korean? Bonus, right? So we shouldn't make the bonus for the manager just on short-term profits. They made that mistake in the financial crisis, okay? If the bonus is linked to short-term profits, the manager, some of the managers just took big risk. If I win, I get a really big bonus, right? And I can retire and go and live by myself for the rest of my life. If I lose, Company fails, anyway I get good pay and a good salary and I get another bonus, okay? So if the company fails after two years or three years, I don't care. 
I already got my bonus. Some of the managers got bonuses of 10 million, 100 million dollars, a lot of money. They don't need to work ever again, right? But the comp if we just think in the short term, we can make very risky decisions and bad decisions for the company. Okay, so it's, we shouldn't use just profits as our short term profits as our objective. If we use short term profits as our objective, the company could also fail. So we decide that stock price is better. Stock price has more long term thinking. Okay, also includes profits in the long term. So uh, we should use stock price. So this is uh, what's assumed, like efficient markets. Okay. So we make these assumptions when we use stock price. We assume that the stockholders control the managers. Okay. So they can hire and fire the managers. They, we're going to talk about later. They can control the manager using the board of directors and annual meeting. Okay. We assume that the manager. Uh, and society in the relationship, if the manager make, does something which is bad for society, they get punished. So all of the society's costs can be linked to the firm. So the managers do some pollution, Uyan pollution, is that correct? More or less? Uyan. Mm -hmm. The hard thing for foreigners learning Korean is you have 13 vowels, we just have 5. So Uyan. So then it's clear the firm did the pollution. Financial markets, we give them the information quickly and on time, and markets are efficient, so the stock price is correct. Okay? And bondholders, also they lend us money, and we protect their interests. So this is like perfect world. Do you understand perfect world? This is the perfect world. If it was the perfect world, we could use only stock prices as our objective. Okay? And forget about everything else. Just use stock prices. Okay? Is this real in the real life? Unfortunately not. Okay? In the real life, stockholders have little control over managers. Managers can do some pollution, but nobody knows about it. Never found out. Okay? Their company never gets caught. Uh, markets can make mistakes, we just saw. They can overreact, underreact to news. Okay? Uh, bondholders can be cheated too. So because of these problems, we need to also consider all of the different stakeholders. So <coughs> one important factor in making sure that the stockholders control the managers well is called corporate governance. Have you heard the word corporate governance before? How do you say corporate governance in Korean? You never studied or heard that word before? Hmm? Okay. Uh, corporate governance is we try to balance all the interests of the stakeholders and it's a system by which the owners control the managers. So I'm a stockholder, I own the company, the managers are working for me. I want to be able to control them. Clearly I'm not going to be standing over their shoulder watching them every day. I have my own job. So we need a system to control the managers, to make sure they're working for the stockholders. So we use the general meeting and the board of directors, AGM and board of directors. So the AGM is annual general meeting. So stockholders can go to the meeting one time a year and they can vote at the meeting to change the manager. Okay, if the manager is doing a good job or a bad job. They can talk with the manager at this meeting. The problem is that I own stock in Coca-Cola. Am I going to fly to New York to go to the AGM? I just bought Shipman One of stock in Coca-Cola. Am I going to fly to New York to go to the AGM? Why not? Why not? I'm the owner, shouldn't I go to the AGM and vote? Tell the managers what to do? Hmm? But the airline ticket is more expensive than my stock. So I'm not going to go there, of course, right? 
And then if I don't go there, the current managers get my vote. If you, that's called a proxy. If the stockholder doesn't go to the meeting, the current manager can get the vote, unless the stockholder give it to somebody else. Okay? Then, that's small investors. What about large investors? Large investors are usually institutional investors. Institutional investor is a person or organization that trades a large amount of stocks and bonds, like a fund, right? So they own stocks in many companies. But if they're not happy with the company, they just sell the stock. They don't usually go to the meeting and make a big problem, right? Instead they say, oh, Coca-Cola's big problem now, I'm just going to sell the stock and invest in another company. Okay? So they don't try to control the managers. And annual meetings are run by management. Management decides what we're going to talk about. This shows the support of the funds for managers. Okay? So we can see the big funds, they just support the manager. Okay? Big investors, they just support the managers. And the small investors don't really go there. So we have a problem in the AGM. It's not really effective for controlling managers. Okay? So I think uh, that's enough. Do you have any question about just we just started talking about the objective? Do you have any question about that? Okay, so uh, then just I should call the attendance, so just wait.